I'm Jordan Lett, Marketing Director at Norfolk Fest Events. I'd like to give a huge thank you to everybody for following along this weekend for Virtual Harbor Fest. I know I've said it once, but I'm going to say it again. We cannot wait to be back together with all of our fans and friends celebrating next year in person. It won't be possible, though, without our many, many volunteers that we have every year. In fact, over a hundred every year and thousands over the decades the event's been happening. It's truly an event built on the spirit of volunteerism. Earlier this week, we sat down with Arthur White, a longtime volunteer of our communications room to talk about what it means to him to be a volunteer at Harbor Fest and what it takes to be a volunteer at Harbor Fest. And here are some of the highlights from that interview. My name is Arthur White. Um, as I said, I've been doing Harbor Fest since 81. Uh, I am an electronic technician by trade and I primarily work on radio communications, so that's obviously inherent and instilled on it, so um, it just, I guess it's just part of how I was raised or just kind of was in me to you know, do that kind of work and just uh, do the volunteer stuff. I know not everybody has it to actually come out and do volunteer work and really put in the effort, you know, that's required of that, you know, some will do it obviously for a few hours and say they're done. and. But I'm using it in it for the long haul and just make sure everything is done, taken care of and everything. So um, I just just never really thought about, you know, what instilled that in me. It's just like, hey, let's just do this. And then and I've done it every year and that's what since I think eighty one I've been doing Harbor Fest, so and um starting with uh Tidewater React back when, you know, the event only had like a handful of radios and so they relied on React and the ham radio operators for the additional uh, radio and manpower and everything so and they just kind of evolved from there over the years as far as kept doing it because I you know enjoyed doing it so so um, like I said I started you know back with react and um, and that's obviously here is where I met Pat um, and it's just kind of ironic that it was during the heat of battle it was like a Friday evening you know things going on and um, the repeater couldn't handle the load of you know all the event and everything so Pat ran to borrow a repeater from EVMS which was the same model repeater and he was proceeding to move the crystals from your repeater to that one and everything and I was just kind of watching over his shoulder and quietly watching and he was going to close it up and I said oh you don't want to do that and he kind of looked at me like why I said because your crystals have drifted and he looked at me funny and he went back and checked and you're right I said how'd you know that I said because I worked on this equipment, so I knew that, and then, of course, that impressed Pat, and that's how I ended up getting offered a job at Gately, and then that even put me more in contact with Pat, and then, um, and then of course, working that close with Pat, working with him, and then you kind of get that vibe of, oh, this is how you want things done, and that flow and everything, and so him and I, you know, worked very well together as far as managing the communications and making sure things are set up and make sure everything's taken care of, everything's working, and contingencies in case something happens or, and of course, things tend to change on the fly and to adapt on the fly and to mitigate those issues. And so that just, that, you know, just built over the years and you always try to make it better and better every year. And that's what we always strive for, to improve on it from the following years so that way you guys have what you need and, you know, um, as little problems or outages or whatever is possible because you're the ones out there handling the fires and getting stuff done and everything, meeting with the public. And we're back here making sure you can do your job and without too much, you know, issues and everything. But um, so, but yeah, it's never been for the, the fanfare or the recognition. It's just being part of that bigger picture and, you know, supporting the bigger event and making it be successful and everything, you know. So I've always kind of been that behind the scenes, behind the camera type person, never wanted to be, you know, out there in the front. So that's, you know, I guess that's kind of my personality. So so I guess when you deal and work around radios a lot, you kind of develop what I call the radio ear. So you can kind of filter through stuff that's just not important, but you kind of pick up on things that, oh, what was that? And then you kind of home in on that particular communication. So okay, let me listen to what's going on. Okay, that's nothing, all right. So. And some people are like, how can you listen to all that? And just, and again, it's just, I call it a radio ear. You just know what's important and what's just noise. And you just kind of, you know, you don't have to pay attention to it. And of course, you know what, listen for that. Karen's voice come across that radio. You know, okay, it doesn't matter what it is. Karen's on the radio, so pay attention, you know. <laughs> Even if it's not directed to you, pay attention, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> 
So I will say in the, in the earlier times, I was would get really dug in because this was the time where we had the older style radios that required a little more love and care and everything. So literally one of the volunteers' jobs was to literally take me and pull me away and walk me, as they say, in the park just to get some air and everything. So, And of course, eventually I kind of like, okay, I know I need to get up, walk away, just get some, walk some, you know, walk around, get some air. So I will I do that on my own now. So. But it's good to get out and just, just kind of get a feel where things are in the park, see if act or two, you know, get some food out here and everything. Um, so that's, um, and of course, you know, hopefully get to check out the fireworks, you know, get that good front row seat and get to enjoy that. Um, or if there's something particular that I say, I want to check that out, I'll, you know, try to make time to hopefully, you know, the room's covered adequately and then go and just walk around, but of course, I always got a radio on the hip so I can be reached and everything. So, so that's, you know, can always be reached. Even though I'm out, you know, doing something, they can always get a hold of me, so. <laughs> um, so like I said, this is a, you know, family-oriented event to gear it to families, to have out here come fun for the kids, for, you know, the parents. Even older folks can, you know, sit back and enjoy uh, the different things are going on out here from the music, the food, um, like I said, the street performers. It, it, it gears to a wide variety of tastes and everything, and especially, you know, a love for being on the water because we are blessed to be, you know, a city that's on the water and everything. So um, over the years, there's been some, you know, negative connotation portrayed to the event towards other things, and I'm kind of like, where are they getting this negative perception from? This, I've been, because I want to say, I've been doing this since 81. I've never seen what you're talking about, you know, portrayed or any, you know, conveyed, but yet this, I haven't heard that come up in quite some time, so hopefully that has been kind of squashed, you know, through the years, and, but, um, but uh, yeah, overall, I think people kind of, you know, enjoy coming down here, and, um, and of course, as long as the weather's nice, it, you know, really makes it a real enjoyable event and weekend, of course, can't do the mother nature, so you kind of got to work around that from time to time. But uh, overall, I think people kind of enjoy coming down here and the music, the food, you know, the, uh, the little street performers and everything always seem to, you know, be a good hit and everything. And every year, you know, festivals might try a little let's try this this year. Let's see if, how people like that and see if this works, you know, or let's try that and see if that works. And so I, I see the little experiments of trying new things and, uh, see how the public responds to it and everything. Says, so, okay, that seems to work, we'll do that again, you know, so. That didn't work, okay, well, just forget about that, we'll try something else, you know. <laughs> I do try to, have tried in the past to get the parade to sale, not all the time, not always successful, because usually probably still getting things prepped and set up, but, you know, if I can, I do try to check that out, but, you know, definitely try to, you know, get a view of the fireworks, because it's kind of like, that's my reward for the weekend, you know, so, okay, I got the fireworks, all right, guess I'm good. <laughs> Thank you to Arthur for meeting with us to talk about what it means to be a volunteer at Harbor Fest to him. We want to give a special thanks to all of the volunteers that have helped over the years to make Harbor Fest what it is today. Thank you all. Now I'm joined with Tim Wentz, marketing manager at Norfolk Fest Events, to discuss what economic impact the festival has on our local economy each year. Thanks, Jordan. Norfolk Harbor Fest is more than the fun sights and sounds along the waterfront. The three-day festival also provides numerous economic opportunities for local businesses, restaurants, vendors, artisans, and much more. Here's a look at a few examples of the economic opportunities that Harbor Fest provides. Well, my earliest uh, memory and uh, recollection of Harbor Fest was really as a child. I got a chance to see the fireworks show and, and experience all the food and experience all the boats and had no idea many years later I'd be working for Fest events which created Harbor Fest. Oh gosh, I was a kid. My, my parents would bring me to Harbor Fest and fast forward, it's really exciting to be a part of the action from this side of the table on the business side. My name's Hamilton Perkins. I'm the founder of Hamilton Perkins Collection. We make award-winning bags and accessories from recycled materials. We had our tent at the last Harbor Fest where everything was set up like a mini store. We had our products were hanging on our tent literally and we had our racks and table. Um, so, you know, there was a lot of uh, excitement around our product and when you just see like a brand that um, maybe you normally have seen online, you finally see it in person. 
that is like a really uh, kind of special um, you know moment for us and for our customers. Once you get to the event, there are so many things to, to see, watch, listen to, taste, savor. And I believe it's just a wonderful melting pot of experiences. And it's nice when you're walking around and you hear different languages being spoken. That means that, you know, we're welcoming everyone. And did you notice that I said we? <laughs> I think an event of that magnitude uh, just puts the city of Norfolk on the map. Uh, the hotels, the restaurants, the economic impact, uh, citizens viewing the city and, and people getting a preview of what the city has to offer, I think it's just awesome for uh, events such as Harbor Fest. So with that great diversity, with that large number of offerings, it's going to attract a good number of people. And the quality at which Fest Events does things is the quality at which we produce those events. Uh, people are going to want to continue to come back, whether it's uh, music for millennials or, or young people or children earlier in the day or late at night. Uh, some of the cultural uh, activities or presentations we have going throughout the day, food um, activations or, or vendors uh, and different other programs that uh, have been produced. Uh, you know, I, I just think that'll continue to have this diverse group of people be here and uh, expand even into the future. I mean, the whole event is, is huge for the city. Anytime we can showcase the city to young entrepreneurs, to people that are, that are here, that are investing in Norfolk, um, and provide them an outlet and a thing to see uh, our great city, we want to do. You know, I, I think it's, it's on and upward from here. You know, I think it's just, uh, it's a bright future and we're super excited and happy to be a part of it. Our local small businesses are not only an integral part of Harbor Fest weekend and all of our festivals and events, but the backbone of our local Norfolk community. And we look forward to continuing to work with them in the future. And as virtual Harbor Fest begins to wind down, we'd like to take a minute to look back at the best of Harbor Fest. And here are some of those highlights now. Norfolk's Perfect. best kept secret. Absolutely. Yep. Perfect. Love this festival. And, uh, when I came here this morning, I wasn't expecting it to be an event of this volume. I love Harbor Fest. Great captain. <laughs> Uh, so far it's been a blast and it's definitely going to change the way this city is. Water everywhere, it's gorgeous. The smell of the salt in the air, there's nothing like it. It's just so comforting, you know, something about being by the water, it's so tranquil and beautiful. It's exactly where you want to be on a weekend like this. This is the best local party anywhere. This celebrates our whole region. The Harbor Fest is all about families. It's all about tradition. People come back year after year. They bring their kids, their grandkids. I think it's good to have events like this, especially with something that is so important to Virginia and Hampton Roads, to celebrate our waterside. You know, Fest Events does a great job bringing people together and giving uh, families places to go and things to do. But I've been every year since I graduated, so it'll be a tradition until forever. We're having a good time. We're here from Alabama. Celebrate the beautiful waterfront of Norfolk at Harbor Fest and the United States Navy. Oh, kids love it. I think the adults love it more. They just try not to show it as much.
I was excited to come here, I'm excited to be here, and I won't be so excited to leave. It's so family friendly. I love the setup, like, you don't feel crowded. It is, there's so much to do all the way along the water. There's no other place in the world I'd rather be right now than Harbor Fest. <laughs> What an amazing look back at all of the elements that make Norfolk Harbor Fest such an iconic festival. And though we couldn't be more proud of all that Harbor Fest has accomplished and brought to the city over the years, our sights and sails are set on the future. Uh, you know, obviously we want it to continue to grow. Uh, with COVID having happened, you know, how do we grow in this post-pandemic era? Uh, how can we do more in the water? How can we do more with sports as we talked about? Uh, how can we have new sponsor uh, activations and, and new partners a part of it? Uh, even as music changes, what new artists could we have? So just the new and creative things that fest events can bring to the table with this. Well, the word that comes to mind is just great diversity. Great diversity of our entertainment, our offerings, our food, our positioning, our elements to the festival that people can experience. Uh, people are gonna wanna continue to come back whether it's music for millennials or, or young people or children earlier in the day or late at night. Some of the cultural uh, activities or presentations we have going throughout the day, food um, activations or, or vendors uh, and different other programs that uh, have been produced. Uh, you know, I, I just think that'll continue to have this diverse group of people be here and uh, expand even into their future. I love it these days when uh, we're also focusing on sharing in having ex exchanges and teaching our children to be multilingual. So I think that, that uh, Harbor Fest lends itself as an excellent opportunity to offer some multilingual offerings you know, to the entire community, but especially the children who are going to school and learning two languages, for example. I would love to be able to see some uh, maybe tours, in guided tours in Spanish, not only of the Latin or the Latinx or the Hispanic or Latino countries, but all of them for some of the families. I think it's important to still draw those tall ships from foreign countries to give the folks the opportunity to interface with those partners that come from across the globe. This event is all about is having exchanges and getting to know more about other countries. You know, what you do shoreside as far as the concerts and that dirty boat race and a couple other things, I think you're on the right track. Hopefully the folks will continue to understand the heritage and from the maritime community and still come down and visit. Uh, but just the, just the size of the event, I love the large outdoor events and how there was something for everybody who kind of came and how that many people could just uh, enjoy in unison uh, without any violence and any conflict or anything, you know, just people could just kind of get along in massive numbers. And again, just, just flood into downtown Norfolk and just kind of put us on the map for those three or four days. Still continue to focus on our watermen, our commercial fishermen. Still you know, have the ability for them to get here in our, especially our tug and barge community. That's important. We want to see the events grow. And you know, the, the Harbor Fest that we knew four decades ago has changed so much now um, in, in our present day. And we, we assume that it's going to change for the better and evolve and get better, bigger, uh, as the Port of Virginia is growing, um, which, is, which is just, it's wonderful for the area and it's wonderful for the patrons who take part in the event itself. It's just kind of working in that marina and then seeing the fireworks show from the marina and as persons would hang out on their boats and uh, you know just kind of live there for three or four days and what that meant to them annually uh, to be in the Harbor Fest Marina. I just thought that was so neat uh, to see their traditions and the way they went about things and meet those guys and, and still be good friends with some of them today. Everyone has a chance to kind of get better you know from you know the brands to everything really you know so I, I think it's just uh, it's a bright future and we're super excited and happy to be a part of it. Hi, I'm Ted Baruti. Thank you for joining us back with the 45th annual Norfolk Harbor Fest virtual style. I'm here with a woman who needs no introduction, Karen Scherberger, who is the founder of Norfolk Fest events and one of the original volunteers of Harbor Fest. 
Karen, thank you for joining us. Well, thank you for setting this up. This is great. Uh, you know, Karen, I have so many memories myself of Harbor Fest, both as a volunteer and obviously as part of your staff, our staff at Fest events over the years. You know, we joke all the time that you could write a book of all of the memories and all the funny stories, but is there is there that one moment or that that one emotion that comes to mind for you when you look back at 45 years of Harbor Fest? You know, when I look at at, at Harbor Fest today and I look at our waterfront and I look at our city here, it's hard not to remember back to when we did have those early days and some of my my best memories are over in Freemason Harbor when it was still just old deserted warehouses and we decided one year to do a Norfolk Through the Ages um, exhibit and we actually took three empty warehouses um, probably broke every permit and ordinance in the city and we came out starting the first weekend in March and all the volunteers this was before fest events we worked every single weekend in the rain in the heat all the way up to Harbor Fest emptying out dumping out these warehouses and creating this amazing living history of Norfolk and you know now Freemason is what it is today but that's part of the great memory is what it was and what it is today and to know that thousands and thousands of volunteers and millions and millions of residents and visitors have come out every year to celebrate what the city has done, what our community has done, what the business sector has done. Um, and it's just, it's such an honor to carry that tradition forward um, for, for the generation today. You know, we've, yeah. we've spanned now three generations. Yeah. Um, and my friends and the people that were older than me who had grandchildren, I mean, it's just amazing the people you meet um, at all ages who have their own stories and their own memories and their own touch points. Um, so that's one of my, my, my fondest memories and you can, you can go forward with that with another million probably. Introducing something new, evolving as the city evolved, um, creating a place of discovery for our guests to come make some great memories with. Um, you've always encouraged us to do that and, and I hope that that will always continue for the next 45 years. This past year and this year, you know, reminds us all of just how very, very important traditions and opportunities for friends and family to come together, how, how important that is, how special that is. And for all of the great work that organizations do all over the world, we will have a special appreciation for what these events mean. But when it comes to Harbor Fest, you know, I, I, I think of Harbor Fest almost like Thanksgiving on the water, you know. It seems like it's always been there, and we always want it to be there. And like Thanksgiving, there's always room for somebody else. The table is open to everybody. And we look forward to that time to come together and tell stories. And maybe that's the only time in a year that some people come together and see friends. You know, the staff does a fabulous job every year of seeing what's new and and or creating something that's brand new. So not only is it a great place to come together with friends and families and to be entertained and to see something new and just as music and, and art, food trends change, while our military and our maritime community is our steadfast constant, they change too. So it's nice to give them, it's wonderful to give them an opportunity every year to tell their story and to talk about the roles that they play and the evolving roles that they've played. And let's give a big shout out, thank you, to the men and women who've devoted their careers to making our, our home uh, a safe and a wonderful place to be. The future will always be what Harbor Fest is as well, and that's the one time a year and the only place really on the East Coast where a community can come together and recognize our military partners, all of these wonderful maritime industries that make us who we are. And, and really, they're, they're, I say that and it, it, it's true, there is no other event like Harbor Fest. 
That's a wrap for us here at Virtual Harbor Fest this weekend. We want to give a huge thank you to all of our fans and friends at home. We look forward to being back with you here next year. We want to know what you want the future of Harbor Fest to look like. Send us an email, send us a message on social media. We want to implement your opinion into future year's events and we look forward to it. Thank you again. We can't wait to see you next year.